<laughs> this week we are talking about the subjunctive mood and conditional sentences. We talked about the subjunctive last week. Conditionals are the more common form of if. There are three main conditional. Sorry, hang on. There are three main conditional um, conjunctions. You have if. Unless. Which is if not. And. Whether. So the big question is when should you use if and when should you use whether? You should only use whether if it is implied that there are options. If it's either like this or that, yes or no. But if it's more open ended, then you should use if. So. In English, there are three main kinds of conditional sentences. The first one is. It. Is in the future. Very neutral. It has not happened yet. Nobody is thinking about doing it. No suggestion has been made. It's a simple if you're just thinking about it. So. In this example sentence, if I break the glass, my mom will be very angry. The glass is still fine. I have not tried to break the glass. I have not decided to break the glass. It is purely neutral. For this kind of conditional, on the left, you use the simple present. On the right, you use the simple future. So if I break the glass, my mom will be very angry. Now, a little later on, maybe you have decided, OK, I'm going to try very hard not to break the glass. I have decided I will not break the glass. But if I did break the glass, and so then you have a conditional that is against the current situation, but it has not yet happened. It is still reversible. It is still preventable. So I have already decided not to break the glass, but if I change my mind, if I broke the glass, my mom would be very angry. So how do you get from the first sentence to the second sentence? On both sides, add a past. So whereas before you had the simple present, here you have the simple past. And on the right, where before you had the simple future, now you have the past future, right? Would is the past tense of will. We call this a past conditional. You don't have to remember this. Uh, since you don't have to remember it, I shouldn't write it like this. Right. Now, a little further on. I have left the building. The glass is no longer near me. It is impossible for me to break the glass. So I in the second sentence, I made a decision, but the situation could still change. In this third sentence, the situation cannot change. For this kind of conditional sentence, Again, both sides add another layer of past. So from broke to had broken. From would be to 
would have been. So these are the three main kinds of situations. Let me repeat that one more time. The first one is nothing has happened. Everything is possible. In this case, on the left, you have the simple present tense. On the right, you have the simple future tense. The second situation is I have made a decision, but I could still change my mind. In this case, both sides, you add a layer of past. So here from simple present to simple past, here from simple future to simple future plus the past. So will becomes would. The third situation is I have made a decision and I cannot change my mind. Again, both sides add another layer of past. So from simple past to past perfect. From broke to had broken. On the right hand side, from simple future plus past to future perfect plus past. So from would be to would have been. So when you see this, when you see a sentence that begins with if or unless or whether, then you can look at the verb to see whether this person is talking about something that may happen, something that may change, or something that will not change. This is the basic concept. Before I get into the more complicated stuff, do you have questions? OK, so let's introduce a, a, a few complications. For example, um, these last two, I have made a choice but I can change my mind, sometimes begins like this. Um, or not begin, sometimes the verb can be turned into were to. So we talked about the infinitive, right? This is something that is uncertain in the future. Maybe will happen. People think it will happen. It is uncertain. So you can use this kind of structure to emphasize that it is uncertain. You have made your mind, but uh, what happens if you change your mind? It is uncertain. OK, let's add another layer of complication. This can also look like. Without the if. Well, well OK, maybe I should do it this way. So this one is changing uh, broke to word to break. And this one is removing the if. The if is gone. Instead, you move the were to the front. So if you see this kind of sentence, were I to break the glass, remember that it means the exact same thing as if I broke the glass. These two are the exact same. You can do something similar for a situation that cannot be changed. Had I broken the glass? Means the exact same thing as if I had broken the glass. This is very similar to last week we mentioned the subjunctive you can put the subjunctive in the front. Um, 
for example, last week we mentioned the use of the word be as a subjunctive, if it is like this. Uh, in English, we have this phrase. Be that as it may. I think I mentioned this last week. So even if this is the case. Uh, if we expand this sentence, it means. Be that as it may, even I uh, should say that even if that is like it may be. But this is much too complicated, so instead we say be that as it may. Similarly, uh, another phrase we often say in English is. If I were you. Or sometimes were I you. Or you also need a while. If I were you. Why does it use were? Because it's using this sentence structure. Now you're thinking. Wait, you said that this sentence is when you can change your mind. It is possible to change. But it's impossible for me to become you. I am me, you are you, we can't change, right? Well, this is because this sentence is not actually saying if I am you. It means if I were in your position. If this situation were happening to me. So it can change. Who knows what might happen in the future? Maybe the situation you are in now, I might find myself in that situation later. So if I were you or were I you. So far so good. Wait one second. One second. Ting Dong Ching Juzo. Uh, sorry, you were asking? Which part? Hmm. It's a very special use of the word were to mean a conditional against the present situation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not connected to any other grammatical idea. It's probably uh, it probably comes from an older kind of English. Uh, I have not researched this very much. Um, so if you go read a grammar book from 10 years ago, it will say that this kind of sentence using like be or using were like this is slowly fading away, that fewer and fewer people are using this kind of sentence. But if you go read a grammar book today, it will tell you that it is resurgent, that once more people started have started to like using these sentences. So you do have to know them. Okay. Let's add another layer of complication. We've been talking about these sentences by putting both sides together and we're changing both sides at the same time. But you don't have to. You can mix these two halves depending on the timing of each the situation described in each half of the sentence. So for example, um, if I get home late, my dad gets very angry. So according to what we just said on the right, this should be simple future. My dad will get very angry. But here, this second half always happens. It's not simply 
like this one time I get home late, he gets angry. It's every time I get late, I get home late, he gets angry. So you can use the present tense in this kind of situation because the time it does not fit the original conditional. Another example. One second, I'm bad at examples. If you had finished your homework on time, you would be at the movies with your friends. Now, according to what we just mentioned, this should be would have been. Because at this point on the left, this situation cannot be changed. Had finished on time means that you did not actually finish your homework on time. The time has passed. You cannot change this situation. But on the right, this situation is currently happening. Your friends are at the movies right now. So this second half fits more with a situation that is not the case, but could be changed. Like you're here, but physically you could be there. The only thing preventing you from going to the movies with your friends is that you did not finish your homework on time. So what I'm trying to show you is that the concept behind conditionals is not dependent all the time on the other half of the sentence. You should look at each half of the sentence independently. Think about whether it makes sense in terms of where you are in time versus whether it's possible to change the situation. Let's see if I can think of another example. Actually, no, we have a we have a textbook, right? Do you guys remember this? We have a textbook. A new English grammar. I have it on my on my computer, so I'll just I'll just pull it up. No. Ah. Downloading. Yes, so a reminder, we do have a textbook, so if you're not clear about some idea, you can check the textbook and see if another kind of explanation makes more sense. I remember the textbook has some more examples of mixing the two halves of a conditional. OK, conditional structures. <laughs> no, OK, it doesn't have examples. 
Sorry about that. The one example it does have makes no sense to me. Nobody listened if he was shouting too much. What does this mean? Can somebody translate this to Chinese for me? Nobody listened if he was shouting too much. Yes, but it doesn't say shouted. It says was shouting. 如果他当时一直大声、太大声讲话的话，没人听，没人在听，不是没人会听。Anyway, it doesn't make sense to me. But in some situations, you can mix the two halves of the sentence, uh, as I gave these two examples to show. Right. So let's give an example of. Oh, we've been using if. Let's give some examples of unless. Well, okay, here we can use the textbook. The textbook uh, examples of unless make sense. Delilah. Yeah. Ah, OK, here. You wouldn't have fallen over unless there'd been a banana skin on the ground. So in Chinese, this means uh, So here, unless means uh, if not. You wouldn't have fallen over if there hadn't been or unless there had been. So unless means if not. And then you have uh, weather. I'll stop at midday whether I finished by then. Or not, and then you can omit the or not. So usually if you use whether there is a choice. Yes or no, this or that. I wonder whether it will rain tomorrow or not. And you can omit the or not. OK, those are the conditionals. The point is to think about the time and the possibility in order to decide what kind of verb to use. Questions? I think this will be clearer when we practice. So first, I want to go back to last week's homework. There was one set of questions that used a lot of conditionals. This is on page 19. Paper clips. Is it, is it this one? I don't think it's this one actually. It's at Dalton. Oh no, it's this one. Moody verbs. Sorry, page 24. Coffee control, coffee break control, yes. So now that we have a bit of knowledge of conditionals, we can better understand this set of questions. As you know, I am now in charge of implementing the new directive that every employee submit to a coffee residue test. Uh, we mentioned because this is directive. It means an order. The company orders every employee to do this thing. Will the employee do it? We don't know. So this is actually in the subjunctive. That's a jasa yuqi. When in English, the subjunctive just looks like the base verb, renshing. If a test given at a time when coffee sipping not authorized and the results positive, the policy, this should be required. 
that the worker donate a pound of coffee. OK, so this situation. The employee is given a test. At a time when the coffee is not allowed. And the test comes back positive. Is this situation possible? It is. There's nothing preventing this situation from happening. It could happen. Are we assuming that it probably won't happen or has somebody made a decision to try to prevent this from happening? No. So. This should be a simple. Conditional it could happen, so if a test is given. At a time when coffee sipping is not authorized and the results are positive. So this situation is possible. If the situation is impossible, uh, if the situation is try is has been tried to be prevented but it is still possible then it would be as it the the question has it a test were given coffee sipping uh this should still be is not authorized sorry so were given and then is not authorized and the results were positive so if you use were, this means that somebody has decided not to give a test at this time. But if we do give a test, so it's against the current decision, but it is still possible to be changed. Same thing here, the results were positive. Because th this, this should be the same as the first one, because it is the result of this test. You only get a test result if you give the test. So if the test uses were, the result should also use were. Now, the second one in this situation should be is. Because the company does have rules against drinking coffee at certain times. It is a fact. It is not related to whether there is a test. How ting dong result. 听不懂的举手 或是或是决定让这件事情不发生，所以是可能发生的。所以答案应该都是is跟are这些现在式的。如果譬如说公司已经宣布说这段时间我们不会做咖啡检测的话，才会用were，因为已经有人决定不做，但是还有可能会改变
authorized and the test had been positive. So this is not and impossible. This happened yesterday. In this case, you would this would be your answer. Had been had been means you cannot change this situation was because this whole thing happened yesterday, so it's in the past tense. Ting dong juzong. Mei ting dong juzong. Shui zao juzong. Okay, everybody is awake. Perfect. So let's continue. So if this happens, the policy requires, this is simple uh, present tense. There's nothing special about this. The subject is policy, the verb is require, simple present third person, so it should be requires. No question. That the worker, this should be donate. For the same reason as this one is submit. It requires, it orders the worker do something. But will the worker actually do it? We don't know. So it's subjunctive, jasa yuchi. It, that the worker donate a pound of coffee to the break room. Do not ask, this is imperative. It's ordering you not to ask. Do not ask me to describe the union's reaction to this directive. If I... So, OK, so the idea is I tell you what this person said and you will blush. So the author says, do not ask me to describe. They don't want to tell you. So they have already decided they will not tell you. But if they tell you, ah, so in this case, this should be if I told you or were to tell you what the shop steward said. The middle one is not conditional. The, this said is simply past tense. The, this person did say something. This is a fact. There is no controversy here. If I were told you what the shop steward said, you would blush. This sentence is not the case at present, but it can change. The author has already decided she will not tell you, but if she changes her mind, she can still change her mind and tell you. So we're using simple past and the past of the present. All I will say, this is no longer conditional. She's telling you she will say it, so it's just a simple future. All I will say is that the steward was not happy. The same as here. The steward did say something. The steward indeed was not happy. These are facts. So there's nothing special here, just the past tense. OK know about the reaction, reconsider. So the idea here is, if at that time you had information about how people would react, you would make a different decision. So the decision has already been made and it cannot be unmade. It cannot be changed. So this should be if you had known or had you known. The situation cannot be changed. Uh, and this sentence is a straightforward conditional. Both sides cannot be changed. So the second half is you would have reconsidered.
one more thing. The coffee stains on my shirt. If they the idea is remain if they're still there. Now, are they there now? Yes, they are there now. Can it change? I think maybe not because it's a stain. It's not just coffee. If it's coffee, you can wipe it off. But if it's a stain, that kind of means it's hard to wash off, right? Mm. This situation is kind of strange. Why would somebody say this? If the stains are still there, what does that mean? If they. OK, so. I'm I think it should be present tense if they remain. So it seems like this person. Uh, knows that there's coffee on their shirt and they are going to try to wash away the coffee stains, but nobody knows whether it will be successful. That's why she's saying if they're still there. Hopefully she can get rid of them, but maybe it won't work, so it's open. Right, the situation could go either way. There has not been a decision. OK, she has made a decision to wash her shirt. But nobody can decide whether it will be successful. So here the word remain is talking about the stains. It's not talking about the decision to wash the clothes. So will the stains remain? Nobody knows. It's open, so it should be present tense. If the coffee stains remain. Should not make you think. Uh, make is causative. So it takes a base form. Make somebody do something. Think that I was drinking. This is also not a subjunctive. This is simply past tense. So good job, sir. Um, uh, I was drinking coffee outside of the official break time. So she either was doing this or was not doing this. There is no question. And this is in the past. You have to have coffee in order to stain your shirt. It's a before and after. So if the stain is from before, then drinking coffee must also be from before. So it's the past tense. Uh, and then the last one is the same. These stains resulted past tense from coffee being thrown at me. Questions? Yeah, I left this unit for the last week of verbs because it is the hardest unit. Uh, all I can say is try to grab on to the idea of uh, what tense and aspect to use for which kind of possibility. This really is the key idea. OK, so. Um, that's the lecture this week. Let's do the start doing the homework together. Let's see. Page 26. You know, when I was preparing this handout, I was going to add 15 pages of practice for the conditional. But I thought, you know, maybe you wouldn't have time to finish 15 pages. So I cut it down to five. So page 26. This one is the subjunctive, Jasuruchi, so it should not be too hard. Notice the main verbs insist, jensu, request, yaocho, demand. 
要求 ，recommend 建议。All of these take the subjunctive. So for these set of questions, please add what you think should be the best verb. There will be more than one answer. Seven questions, I'll give you five minutes. Four minutes. Um, so somebody is always watching. Sorry, please continue. Okay, let's compare answers.
Number two, they requested that we not. I mean, you can. There are lots of things you should not do after midnight. Maybe they requested we not sing after midnight. They requested that we not go out after midnight. Do we have other answers? They requested that we do not study after midnight. You know, any verb in the subjunctive form, which is basically the base form. This is number two. Number three, she demanded that I tell her the truth is the most common answer. Do we have other answers? She demanded that I. I mean, you can say should. Because when you demand something like if you use the word shall like that, you are all you are demanding somebody, but it already says demand, so it's redundant. You didn't wrong. So the, uh, OK, number four. I recommended that Rita. Go is the most common answer. Go to the head of the department. In, in Chinese, we say Jiao Da Chu Zhao Ren. Number five, I suggest that everyone write a letter to the governor. Another possible answer, send and connected to send mail. A letter to the governor. Mail can mean send through the mail. Number six, it is essential that I. OK, so one answer pay. Uh, why don't you just say visit visit you tomorrow? See you tomorrow uh, that I talk with you tomorrow. All are possible. Um, some of you might think, well, what about talk to you? Well, to talk to somebody just means that if I talk to you, that means I'm talking, you're listening. But if you want a dialogue, then you would use talk with. So both people are talking to each other. Number seven, it is important that he. OK, B or even become the director of the English program that he you can uh, use the previous answer C. Or go to. See the director that he. You can have a more creative answer, right? Divorce the director of the English program. For very important personal reasons. Number eight, it is necessary that everyone. Be here on time, get here on time, arrive here on time, etc. So this is not too hard uh, because the subjunctive looks exactly like the base form. Questions? OK, let's take a break. When we come back, group five will give their presentation.
Okay, let's welcome group five to give their presentation. Uh, hi, uh, we are group five. Old man try to explain passive. An old man try to explain passive voice to small girl. He suppose that you killed me and said you you who do the killing are in the active voice and I who have been killed am I the passive voice. But the small girl retrieved. Could a person even speak to say in passive voice, I've been killed. <clears throat> if he had been killed, she put on the spot in class to explain the passive voice and said it is the kind of voice you speak in when you are not quite dead. Uh, the main idea is an and and code and 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 code into starting passive voice explain to a child emphasis on the importance of passive voice in communication. Strong and wide uh, pres pres <coughs> pers perspective. Uh, in the elemental of style, this book, strong and wide. Uh, uh, main idea is a uh, truck and white uh, voice have of a tape voice for direct and for full language. Mention the passive contraction they're using in their writing.
all views. Main idea is the decision on discussion on Orwell and other highlighting the potential of the passive voice to to cancel accountability. <laughs> Example for governmental and medical context. In the article, it mentioned that using the passive contrition can be made a DVD. Agreeing with this point, of you because I think that is some writing techniques. It is more profound to use the passive voice and describe the protagonist being subjected to an action than to use the active voice to express the subject's perceived action. Take the you kill me sentence in the article as a sample. There is a obvious full the numbers is, but when the purpose becomes I was killed, the reader may not immediately know who killed me, which not only creates substance for the story, but also adds more uncertainties to the direction of the story. In the article, it's mentioned that passive voice can easily be used to conceal accountability and in much of the language issued by, by government office. It usually becomes a thing of responsibility. Agreeing with this point of view since it doesn't call for a person or entity that X as the verb to be named. That means that can throw the question out without specifying who is the one of who is taking the initiative, blurring the responsibility of the person involved in the event. And the speaker can also use this method to dilute his responsibility. The door of the deed described in the sentence can be identified and recourse to the passive eliminated. The synaptics need to say who it was, but he doesn't see or see but the sites. Cycles therapeutic grounds for the use of the passive voice. The passive mindset can see many things at work on one's behalf in life besides one's inborn gift and the gifts themselves can't be tapped without one's learning to be largely passive about them. Example, active voice. I won the Oscar for best actress. She used I want to complete, complicate many factors into one factor. Talent or completed 
with well and hard work, and her success indeed rests largely on her talent. Passive voice, and I was awarded the Oscar for Bad Actress. She allows for the support and in play for all the other elements that contributed to her success. And artists, they hesitate to say that they produce their creations. They don't call on the passive voice to describe their work. They resort the ways to minimize their parts in the process as, as perpetrators. Eric Bass used I took my lead for my puppets. A poor family respects state, states of mind and attitude embedded in the farce took my lead from. The sculptors who carved marble might be thought to be unlikely advocates cases of passive the in art, but less wrong. However, they want they aren't an expression to the rules. Just like Art August Ruden, who was Michael and Joe's admired, talked about his spirit. Spirit. The work of art is already in the marble. I just chop off the material that isn't indeed uh, needed. Uh, I will talk about this part and this discussing the role of the conscious unconscious mind in various aspects of our lives. It provides examples such as the way flight pilots rely on muscle memory during flight and how we is instinctively recognize faces or react to situations. The article also touches on the unconscious processes involved in understanding a passage with jumbled letters and the sequencing of adjectives in language. The author suggests that we often underestimate the power of the unconscious mind and emphasis its importance in creativity and problem solving. They share a personal experience of tapping into their unconscious mind during a plane flight and how this led to a breakthrough in their creative work. The, the author recommends we using passive voice and embarrassing moments of pass passivity to assess the creative potential of the unconscious mind. So the PPT is my main point. You can look at this. Just, uh, just what I'm saying is my summary. So after thought, uh, the passage explains how our unconscious mind plays a big role in our lives. Just what I the statement of beginning. Even in things we do without thinking, like flying a plane or understanding language, the author shares a personal story about a plane journey that helped us understand the importance of dating God and allowing our unconscious mind to take over, leading to a burst of the creativity. Thus, our unconscious mind is a powerful tool that can help us be more creative and pro productive we learn to trust it. After thought, in my opinion, I agree. I agree with the article that our unconscious mind plays an important role in various aspects of life. The idea that giving more credit to the unconscious can increase creativity and relieve pressure is intriguing. 
but <clears throat> it is important to strike a balance without neglecting conscious thought and planning. A balance approach that utilizes both sides of our minds may be the most effective strategy. The idea of using passive voice in thinking to assess the unconscious mind is a very interesting approach to see if it can help in the creative process. The value of recognizing the role of the unconscious mind in our lives encourage us to be more open to the idea that our best ideas and skills may come from within, beyond conscious effort. And our conclusion, the article discusses the role of passivity in art and emphasis, its significance in fostering creative creativity. It highlights that passiv passivity is not limited to conscious learning. Setting examples of skills such as face rec recognition, recognition and language processing that come naturally to humans. The article concludes by emphasizing how in incorporation, incorporating the passive voice in everyday speech can tape into the, the unconscious and stimulate creativity, encouraging readers to embrace this concept for personal and creativity exploration. So, thank you everyone. Okay, thank you group five. So their report was on the chapter on the passive voice. The passive voice has a very bad reputation. People often blame it for hiding important information. The person was killed, but we don't know who killed him, right? This thing was done by somebody, we don't know who. But the author reminds us that the passive voice can be the best choice in some situations. When there are many people who do it, it makes more sense to use the passive voice instead of trying to say every single person. Or when you don't know or you can't say who did it. it. The example is artists. When an artist creates a work of art, the artist often feels like they got their inspiration from somewhere else. But where is that somewhere else? It's hard to say. So in these situations, the passive voice is actually the best choice. So the author wanted to remind us that every part of grammar has its own use and that if we think about the passive voice in a more positive way, it might lead us to see the world from a different perspective. So uh, group five, reminder, please submit the peer review sheet on time. Group six, where's group six? Is group six here? Hi, so you guys are next week. Um, so this week, group five decided to read from their slides. If you want to do that, it, you can. I personally think it's a more dangerous way of giving a presentation. As I said last week, most pressure in public speaking comes from being afraid to make mistakes. If you put what you're going to say exactly on the slide, then everybody will know if you make a mistake. Whereas if you read from something else and you only put the main points on the slide, then even if you make a mistake, people may not discover it. Um, but in the end, it's your choice how you want to present. You know, this is your first semester in college. I don't want to give you too much pressure. 
other teachers will later tell you how better to present. OK, uh, and uh, I do recommend that um, group six and group seven, you should probably rehearse at least one time before presenting. OK, let's get back to the subjunctive. We are still on this page, 26, the second part. OK. So uh, we have another 16 questions here, 14. The first three have two have been done. 14 questions. I'll give you three minutes. OK, let's compare answers. Number three, the doctor recommended that she stay in bed for a few days. Number four, the students requested that the test be postponed. Uh, but the instructor decided against the postponement. Number five, it is essential that no one be admitted. Here, the word admit does not mean tell the truth. Admit means allow inside. Be admitted to the room without proper identification. Number six, it is critical that pollution be controlled and eventually eliminated. Number seven, it was such a beautiful day that one of the students suggested we have class outside. Number eight, the movie director insisted that everything about his productions be authentic. Number nine, it is vital that no one else 
know about the secret government operation? Number 10, Mrs. Wa asked that we be sure to lock the door behind us. Number 11, I requested that I be permitted to change my class. Number 12, it is important that you not be late. Number 13, it is imperative that he return home immediately. Number 14, the, government, uh, the governor proposed that a new highway be built. Number 15, Fumiko specifically asked that I not tell anyone else about it. And number 16, she said it was important that no one else be told about it. The important part of this set of questions is not the answer. The answer should be quite clear. The important part is all of these verbs and ideas. Like important, ask, propose, imperative, which means important, request. That you recognize these words lead to the subjunctive, insist. In this kind of sentence, if you see this kind of word, uh, some kind of order or a condition followed by that, uh, sorry, sorry, suggested and then followed by that, and then a sentence, then this sentence probably uses the subjunctive mood. OK, questions about this one? All right, let's move on to conditionals. Page 27. So I could not find correction questions for conditionals. So instead, I gave you five pages of regular questions. So let's do page 27, page 27. Uh, first part, five questions. I'll give you five minutes.
OK, let's compare answers. Number one. If Sally didn't have the flu, she would be at work today. Does Sally have the flu? A, yes, she does have the flu. B, is Sally at work today? No, she is not at work today. Number two, if Albert didn't take his allergy medication, allergy, guoming, he would sneeze and cough all day. A, does Albert take his allergy medication? Yes. B, does Albert sneeze and cough all day? No. These two are the same grammar, right? Past tense, simple past, and then the past of the future. So these are situations that are not true, but could become true. Number three. If our first flight had been on time, we would not have missed our connecting flight. So, A, was the first flight on time? No, it was not on time. B, did we miss our connecting flight? Yes, we did con uh, miss the connecting flight. So this one says had been and would not have. So this is not true and will never become true. Cannot change. Number four. If we had a reliable car, we would drive from the East Coast to the West Coast. A, do we have a reliable car? No, we do not. B, we are going to drive from the East Coast to the West Coast. No, we will not because we don't have a reliable car. C, we would like to drive from the East Coast to the West Coast. Yes, they want to. If they had a reliable car, they would do it. So they want to. Number five. Tim would have married Tina if she had accepted his proposal of marriage. A. Tina accepted Tim's marriage proposal. No, she did not. B. Tina and Tim got married. No, they did not. C. Tim wanted to marry Tina. Yes. D. Tina wanted to marry Tim. Sorry, Tom. Who's Tom? Some love triangle is going on here. Uh, let's assume that means Tim. Tina wanted to marry Tim. No. Because it says, if she had accepted, which means that she did not accept. So she does not want to marry Tim. OK, questions about these? OK, next one. Complete each sentence according to its description. Write the letter of the correct completion. Right, so Present true is what we have been saying as anything is possible. Nothing has been decided yet. Present untrue is somebody has decided, but the situation can change. Past untrue is somebody has decided and the situation cannot change. So on page 28, uh, please match each number with the correct option. There are four questions. I'll give you four minutes.
Okay, let's compare answers. Oh, okay, three questions, four minutes. Okay, so first one, it already tells you what kind of sentence, present true. So, um, anything is possible, anything can change. If you come early, C, we won't be late. Won't is will not, simple, pre uh, sorry, simple future. Simple present with simple future. Two, present untrue. If you came early, A, we wouldn't be late. Three, past untrue cannot change. If you had come early, B, we wouldn't have been late. Group three, first one, present untrue. If Professor Smith were absent, so the answer is C, class would be canceled, but he is not absent, although it's possible he could become absent. The situation could change. Number two, present true. If Professor Smith is absent, B, the class will be canceled and number three if professor ha smith had been absent a the class would have been canceled and the next one number one if john quits his job a his wife will be upset two if john had quit his job his wife would have been upset and number three if John quit his job, his wife would be upset. Questions? Okay, homework. Finish the handout. Zhang Yixie Wan. This is the last lecture about verbs. Don't say So starting next week, we're going to talk about nouns, mingzi. Do you have any questions about verbs? OK, cool. So remember, all of this could be on the final exam. So try not to forget anything as we move into the next unit. And next week, I will pass out the new handout. OK, see you next week.